Today we are talking about the biggest mistake we made when buying our first cow. Today we are going to go over the biggest mistake we made when buying a cow. And then we're going to go over some things that you really want to take advantage of when you're about to buy a cow. So before we jump into the biggest mistake, if you like topics like this, uh, smokers, cooking on a Traeger, cooking on a pellet grill, uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications below, and leave a comment down below uh, because that's what our channel normally does. But it is this time of year where people are starting to gather in their backyard and they want to drink beer with their friends. And when they drink beer with their friends, they normally come up with some great ideas like, dude, let's buy a cow. And that's normally how it happens. So I wanna share with you some of the mistakes or the most important mistake we made and then some things that you probably wanna take advantage of and we're gonna do that right now. The biggest mistake we made was after we bought the cow and we got it shipped to the butcher, we let it hang for 36 days. That's right, we let the carcass, the meat, we let it hang for 36 days before they, they butchered half of the cow, all right? But Kevin, isn't that dry aged? Yes, that is absolutely dry aged beef right there. The problem was, that's too much dry age. All right, we had 754 pounds of beef and bone hanging and it was all being dry aged. Now when you go to a fancy restaurant, you have dry aged ribeye, you have dry aged sirloin, uh, or I should say New York strip, filet. Those are the primary dry aged beef that you're used to eating if you go to those type of restaurants. Dry aged chuck, dry aged top round, bottom round, uh, shin, shank, all that, you normally don't have dry aged. Now that might not be the problem because what happened was the first few months you would text your buddies, oh my God, this dry age is simply amazing. And it was, but then a few months go by, all right? And then you're cooking up that top round, all right? And that dry age is starting to be, this tastes, the funk's really starting to show. Even though it's been sitting in your freezer, it's you're just having the same meat over and over and over again. You have anywhere from 200 to 300 pounds in your freezer and you need to work your way through it. That is just too much dry age. Now, what pieces were awesome? Like I said, the ribeye, the filet, uh, and the New York strips were awesome, all right? Started off good in the beginning, a chuck roast was really good. Doing the poor man's brisket that way, delicious, all right? Uh, top round was okay, all that, it was just okay. But as time went on, no. It started to get, this is, like I said, it's a lot of funk. The thing I liked the least was actually the brisket, which is crazy, because I know there's a few videos out here that say, oh my God, 60 day dry age brisket, it's amazing. No, this was not good. All right, and I've tried dry age brisket twice, and both times have not been good, so I'll I don't know, I'm gonna try it again because I'm like, these videos can't say it's this good and I taste it and it's that bad. Uh, but the fat on the dry aged brisket has just been nasty. It's been too funky. Uh, it's not even the good funk you want. So anyway, that was our biggest mistake and I've been told by a lot of people, even the butcher was calling us after you know 14 days because that's pretty much as long as you wanna go for hanging uh, after 21 days, they're like, hey, this is still hanging. You sure you want to keep going? Yeah, of course. We want dry age. Um, he called again after 28 days, and then we finally told him to pull it and cut it at 36 days. Uh, the butcher knew best. Now, I did mention that we only, cooked, we only had the butcher cut half of it. Well, we decided, being average Joes, we wanted to try to butcher half a steer ourselves. All right. And I put that video right here so you can see it in case you and your friends are that ambitious also that you want to butcher some of it. 
This is a video of how regular non-butchers did butchering a cow, and it was a lot of fun, uh, but our butcher did a phenomenal job, so it's kind of hard whether we're gonna do it again or not. All right, let's talk about a few pro tips that I learned from this experience. Number one was getting a chest freezer. All right, if you don't already have one, you're gonna have to buy one. I, mine was about seven uh, cubic feet, it cost me, I don't remember, it's eight, nine months ago. I think it was $200, $220. Uh, wasn't the worst in the world, but it's been a game changer. And not just because you have to store 200 pounds of beef. That's huge too. But now, anytime I go through the grocery store and I see a deal, I can pick that deal up and know I have plenty of room in my freezer. Because there's no way you're going to be able to put this much beef in your refrigerator at any given point. You have to have some type of deep chest freezer out in your garage or somewhere to store this. The other advantage of the chest freezer, which I think you should take advantage of, is you should have a rule in your house. Anytime beef tenderloin is under $10 a pound, you have to buy it. There's no more decision to be made. You have to buy it, all right? You bring it home and you slice it up the way you want. I made a video on that, and it is just a really quick breakdown of a beef tenderloin. You can cut up steaks the way you want it. Uh, you can cut up uh, the beef tenderloin to do roast the way you want it. It's very therapeutic. It's a great, fun, at-home butchering experience. And when you have a chest freezer, you can cut it up, put it in vacuum-sealed bags, and put it in your chest freezer. Your kids and family are going to be spoiled because they're always going to have really good steaks that you got for a really good price. All right, and finally, the last thing I wanna leave you with that I thought was a pro tip is one of my friends had bought a cow the year before and he told me he ate all the steaks first and then he was left with chuck, top, bottom, and ground beef uh, for the next six months and he didn't really wanna eat it. So the cost savings wasn't there for him because he had to go back to the grocery store all the time and buy steaks. He was very into steaks, which is awesome. Um, so I went in with the mindset of the first month, I didn't want to touch any of the steaks I got from the cow we got. So, and yes, I'm calling it a cow. I know it was a steer. Uh, it was a black Angus. I know, I know, I know. But when you're drinking beer in the backyard with your friends, you're like, Hey, let's get a cow. All right. That's the conversation. Everybody else on the grammar police, calm down, we got a cow, we got a steer, we got a black Angus, whatever you wanna call it, thank you. Anyway, I made sure for the first month I didn't have any steaks and I wanted to really get through some of the chuck, some of the top and bottom round and the ground beef. Now for the whole cow being dry aged, I will say the ground beef, cause you're gonna get a lot of ground beef, you're probably gonna get 200 pounds of ground beef when you get a whole cow. The ground beef was amazing. The dry age ground beef is still actually my favorite part of this entire cow. So it was a huge win. Uh, but the, like I said, the other things you're going to get tired of, uh, the chuck, the bottom, the top, most people, that's not their favorite thing to cook up. So I forced myself in the beginning to eat a lot of that and to do new recipes with those cuts of beef so that by the time I got to my steaks, I didn't have a ton of chuck and top and bottom, less desirable cuts. Now in my house, I eat so much beef because of this channel that I've really come to appreciate those cuts more than actual steaks some days. I, I like all the different flavors I get from different cuts now. Because I've had to experiment with so many different cooking methods and flavors that uh, to me, I don't need a ribeye every single time anymore. I like other cuts. Uh, so that I encourage you to look up different recipes on how to get it done. But that's what I wanna leave you with is start with the less desirable cuts. So as you're working your way through your freezer, you're not through your steaks right away and then, oh, oh I guess we're having chuck again. So that's what I want to leave you with today, just kind of as a public service announcement to get ready 
for cattle that's about to be auctioned. A lot of county fairs, because we're still under quarantine, have been canceled. So what you should do is probably go onto Facebook and if you have a local county you know, commissioner page or county farm page, you should reach out and start following and say, hey, when is the cattle auction going to be? Because there's going to be a lot of livestock that's being sold right online, right on Facebook, and you and your friends should probably start talking about that now. Because before you know it, guess what? Auction's gonna be here, and hey, are you in? Are you, are you who, who's in with me on getting this cow, or pig, or goat, uh, whatever it might be? You wanna start organizing that right now so you're ready when the auction comes. You guys have been great, and I will talk to you soon.